Hey guys, today I'm going to go over uh, boots, kind of, I guess. Uh, this, this, is, this is something, this comes from my experience. Um, this is, comes from uh, all the athletes we've coached that have disseminated this information, and some have tried, some haven't gotten feedback over this time to kind of see how they affected. Because when I did this um, uh, in Buds, we had the Bates Lights. This boot is basically a carbon copy of that essentially, and this is the Nike boot. Um, and I just kind of want to go over some of the features with this. Understand, first and foremost, like if this were setting like on a nice, perfectly perpendicular table to the floor, you would notice potentially that this angle right here, this heel angle here, and then this angle here is, is it's in a tilt. This is, okay? So that's one of the things, the biggest problems about a boot is this boot puts you in the same position ankle-wise and up the stream through the leg on the quad, it creates the same position as somebody who walks on a barbell back squat when they walk back out of a, a rack. Okay, so when you put this thing on, right, it forces the ankle forward, right? It forces weight onto the toe because we're at, at least at least a six millimeter lift, a six millimeter lift plus the ankle, right? We're talking about dorsiflexion, when I lift my toe, this angle shortens. The angle to my shin angle in my toe, dorsiflexion. When I push my toe down, it's called plantar flexion, okay? So this puts you in a dorsiflexed position. So when I, in my squat, for example, you can't you kind of see my feet, right? When someone, acts, like, when they unrack, they go like a lot of times like this, and we step back in the rack, this hut, but back position is forced into a ruck. Why? Because these shoes fall under a government contract of manufacturing. The U.S. government says if you are going to manufacture a boot for the U.S. military, it has to have these specifications, this silly mil-spec bullshit that people say, this is good. No, <laughs> mil-spec is garbage, okay? So because the specs on this boot have to fit a... a a contract that's been established by manufacturing companies. So, even if, even if our military wanted to make like a totally different boot and sell it to our military, it would still have to fall within the same specs, right? It has to be flame retardant. It has to be water resistant. That's Cordura. It has to have a six millimeter heel, heel lift. It has to be plantar flexed, or I'm sorry, dorsiflexed. There's all the, and how do I know this? Because this was one of my jobs in the military in development. I'm the one that helped develop footwear for finning, for weight training, for mountain climbing. I was one of those guys. So I had to go behind the scenes and work with companies like Nike and New Balance and see how they manufactured so we could say, hey, manufacture it this way. It was kind of like insider trading. Like that's how a lot of stuff gets developed because you can, if you develop it within the military, you can develop it beyond some sort of generic perception that a company might not have. So like Knight can come into NS Naval Special Warfare and go, hey, can you give me some of your insider trading? We said, yes, we can, but now we, we're, we'll, we have to give that insider trading to everyone, you know, to all the other companies too, to make it fair. Well, some companies have the resources to make changes real quick, which is why Knight got that contract. Okay, so. That's why the boot is inferior compared to something we made it specifically for, because this has got to encompass all these mil-spec nonsenses. Okay, so now that we can't change that or change the boot, how do we make this thing a little bit better, okay? The first thing I would suggest doing is understanding what you're dealing with here. You have a pretty decent tennis shoe, like you have a pretty decent athletic shoe. It's not bad. It's not bad, it's not terribly wide, but it's, we can stretch this out when we get this thing wet and we can get those, the toe. They have shoe expanders, they're wooden. Deion Sanders was way ahead of his time. He was putting shoe expanders in his, in his running, his football cleats and baseball spikes like in the 90s to spread out that toe box a bit, right? And you notice him limping around a whole lot, right? A lot of stuff, like a lot of old players, man, just their feet are just mangled. So what I did is I, I went to Buds, I went and got these, my boots. I, I, I got a pair from Supply, I bought my own pair, and I eventually bought a third pair because I'd cycle them. But the point is, is I'm trying to widen 
this part right here. I'm trying to stretch this leather out right here without pulling it out of this, this glued and sewed seam. Right, it's stitched and sewed. So if I can get this get the real, real wet and saturated and, get, and spread this out somehow, pack it full of paper, pack it full of whatever to start spreading this thing out, that's what I, that's what I did. The second thing you gotta understand that this is, there's two boots in one. These are, this is, this is for sand spats. These are sand spats. This is not ankle support. The worst thing you can do is lock your fucking ankle down and not let it move just like on a squat. So this is just to keep sand out. Understand, just for sand, nothing else, okay? So your first step is to take this tennis shoe and lace it like it's an independent tennis shoe so we get a good heel lock. That's what this is for. This is a heel lock, this little guy right here, this metal clip, that's a heel lock, okay? And that heel lock runs, its tension will run into the angle of the shoe. You see this, this line right here, that's where the tension comes from. So when I lace this up, the tension goes into, across the arch of the foot, the top arch of the foot, and instead of locking down the ankle, okay? So what I did in Buds, I tried two different things, and this is what I tell people to do. You have two options. We have more than two. But what I did in Buds was I first tried is, what I did is I took this independent boot and I tied, when I laced this shoe up like a regular tennis shoe and I square knotted at the heel lock. And now this is all flimsy. So now I have a tennis shoe that the ankle isn't sound. Now I still wanna, I'm gonna still drop my pants into here because you have to blouse your pants, right? But then you just keep this, what I would do is I would run this, this I'm sorry. So I got my loops right here. I would just run the loops all the way straight through, straight through it, and then I would just loosely wrap this around and tie it. So I have total mobility and flexion here. The boot is locked in place, or the shoe, the shoe is locked in place. This is keeping sand out. This isn't limiting my ankle, okay? Now the trouble, we use a square knot, specifically a square knot, because it's easy to get out, especially when it's wet and cold. Okay, that's, you'll learn that in buds. Why, do we, why is a square knot one of the ones you use dot, knot tying? Because it's easy to do, it won't slip out, and it does really well when it's wet or the laces are cold and frozen. Believe it or not, when you're fucking trounced around the mountain in Afghanistan, your little loop tie shit don't work. Okay, <laughs> same with the jungle, same with the places in the, de in, the, in the desert. These knots are important, okay? So the other thing you can do, which I tried after a while, once I got through a couple months of weeks and buds when you're not like always changing out your stuff. First phase, you're constantly changing out your boots, in uniforms and in and out of this, and it's a nightmare. But as things slow down, you kind of get an idea and you kind of like play the lottery a little bit. And you're like, well, I'm, I'm gonna lace this thing up a little bit different. So what I did my, after the back half of Buds when I started using my jungle boots, I cut these laces. I cut them just like my, my Vivos. Square knot, right? So it's basically turning this shoe, not really, into this down here. So now I've got this square knot here. I cut these laces and then what I would do is I took the extra laces and I ran them through. I just run them through the ankle loosely. I tie them off at the bottom, so when I pulled it tight, it cinched at the ankle, and there's no, there was no lacing in between. So the ankle is completely independent of lacing from the foot, right? And so now I can just like tie them, loop at the bottom, like, like they're anchored just like they are down here. I just tie the anchor loop across, and then just zigzag a short one, and I can get it real loose. And so I could slide this thing on, lace the bottom, and I can just tuck my, my laces right in and I zip out of the wherever I'm at. So I don't even have to lace up the top because I can get my shoe on, get my pants in and start moving with the class. And then when I have a time to slow down, I can, just rat, I can just lock these downs or some guys would drop in rubber bands here. You can get black bungee at fabric stores. And I would just run, I ran stretchy bungee across this. So I just open it up and slide it on. The bungee closed it off. So that's another thing I did, but the problem, the bungee, the bungee and the salt water kept wearing out. The friction and the salt kept breaking down that rubber bungee. So it all kind of depends on like, you know, cause it's kind of more of a buds thing. Like I don't need to be that fast and expeditious changing my boots in a tactical environment. I've already got that thing sorted out in security. In the buds environment, we're trying to be quick and fast. These can really help you out.